step. If there's another Start one. off with reminders. So, you will have your midterm grades back to you on Thursday. I'll be going over your grades with you. Uh, I'm going to put a video on. I'm going to bring you up one at a time for those of you who are interested, and I'll talk about your grades and go over them with you. I won't have time to do everybody, um, and if I miss you today, then I'll suggest you come talk to me during office hours and let me go over your midterm grade with you. But that won't be available until Thursday. I do not know yet at this point whether I'll have yours exercises, the papers graded at the same time. Uh, I've got one class done already, I'm halfway through another class, and I'm not sure whether that's your class or not, I don't remember. So we'll see. But promise midterm grades back by this Thursday. Coming up next, a week from this Thursday, quiz number three. Yeah, quiz number three. Isn't it quiz four? four. Okay, I have lost count. Whatever, <laughs> I have the last quiz. Um, it will cover chapters four, five, and six. <laughs> four, five, and thirteen. Four, five, and thirteen. Uh, four, five, and thirteen. Quiz number three or four. Um, let's see what it is. It's quiz number four. From this Thursday, quiz number four. Good. Okay. So that's what's coming up. Those are requirements. I'll talk to you about your next paper assignment. Let me briefly describe it to you right now. Next exercise. We can't really talk much in depth about it because I haven't got to the chapter on inequality, on class stratification. But your next exercise is on poverty or welfare. There's two ways of doing the uh, exercise. You can do it as a traditional research paper, which you take a look at welfare. Decide what's wrong with it, backing that statement up with evidence, and then doing something about welfare. In other words, the structure of that will look very similar to the first one. Instead of doing deviance, you're now doing welfare. But the second alternative, and it's worth the same as the first, is to actually do an experience with poverty. The prompt for that has been online since the beginning of class. There's a whole list of things that you can do. You can ride a bus from the poor part of town to a rich part of town. Well, specifically, where there's a high job growth and from a poor part of town to where the jobs are. Sorrento Valley. See how long it takes. You can interview somebody on welfare. You can talk to somebody in a homeless shelter. You can go to a poor school and talk to a teacher. You can go to a high income school and talk to teachers. There's a whole list of things to do. You then write about that experience, what it told you about poverty, and then compare that to some data on poverty. Both of those are equal in their point totals. I'll talk more about that later on as we get closer. But for those of you who may be thinking about getting started on that, that's this next exercise. It's on poverty, <coughs> either as a traditional research paper or as a field experience, comparing that experience to data. Yeah. Um, can we start asking questions Dr. Fox about it? Sure. You can ask it right now if you want. Um, for the second one, um, how much fuel time would we have to spend? How much what? Fuel time. Like That's up to you. Um, you can spend, I don't know, a day. You can go downtown. You know, if you're looking for homeless people, there's no problem finding them downtown. You can go down there. You can talk to a homeless person. You can go over to the shelter and talk to an official there at Father Joe's. You know, that's your day. And you're done with that. You can spend more time doing that. Don't spend too much time in the field because the payoff is not just that, but also comparing it to data. You can just write about your experience. And that will get you maybe two or three points. Anything beyond that, you're going to need to bring in sociological data as a and the easiest way to do that is to focus on something you've already got data on and then do the uh, field experience. Get some stuff on welfare. Get some stuff on homelessness. Uh, the average age of a homeless person in the United States is 55. Uh, about one third of all of them are uh, veterans of the military. Now go into a homeless center and talk to the official. Uh, do you get mostly old people here or young people? Uh, are any of them veterans? That kind of stuff. And then frame your questions you ask around the data you've already got. Okay. Any other questions about that assignment? I will go into more depth, but again, until we get closer, you're not going to have much of a data point 
much use of analysis until I do that. Okay, um, let me see something real quick. All right, if you guys are interested in a little extra credit, there is going, we're going to be doing talking about poverty here shortly. Uh, you actually you can even add this to your experience. Uh, next Wednesday, that's November 4th at 6.30 at the San Diego Unified School District, they're doing a hearing on funding adequacy for education. You go and you sit in on that, They'll be talking about poverty. They'll be talking about the incomes of people in the community. They'll be talking about educational spending. There's a large auditorium there. It's at 4100 Normal Street. 4100 Normal Street. It is the auditorium connected to the San Diego Unified School District. 630. You go to that. Two points. I'll be there. And you can just sign in two points for going there. You then write a one-page response to what you heard about it. Another three points. Five extra credit points. But these are the small little extra credit points that will be added to a single quiz score. Not a midterm, not the midterm, but a quiz score. So that is available for a little bit of extra credit for a single quiz score. Wednesday, November 4th, 6.30. 4100 Normal Street. Hearings on funding on education. San Diego Unified, the vast majority of children in San Diego Unified are in low income district. Like three quarters of all their kids in San Diego Unified are either low income, language learners, or foster youth. Three quarters. Okay, so poverty, next exercise. You can use that get five extra credit points. You can also then use that as part of your exercise itself. While you're there, you can talk to some people in the audience. Find a teacher. There'll be teachers there in the audience. Interview a teacher. Find out which school they teach at. Is it low income? Is it high income? Mostly it's going to be low income because there's mostly low income people in San Diego Unified. Um, so that's an alternative for a little bit of extra credit points and a way of starting your next assignment. Uh -huh. so, uh <laughs> for the little extra credit point added to a quiz score, you have to interview anybody. You just go sit there and then write a little one page response to what you heard. One page response. Now, you can, you're not required, in addition, you can add that as an experience of poverty for your exercise. That's not required. Though. Okay, any questions on that? A little extra credit points on that stuff. Okay, can, let's see, let me start this. Okay, can we get lights, please? Let's review what we talked about last time. We are talking about Piaget. Did I get through all four no. stages or just the first one in this class? First one. Just the first one. Okay. So we got four. Okay. So we've been looking at socialization. Well, at least we started off looking at socialization and the debate about what makes us human. That age-old debate about nature versus nurture. You know what it is to be human. You speak language. Yeah, we know other animals have primitive forms of language, but no other animal on earth has the language abilities of human beings. We also use tools, but those tools come out of our ability to think and reason. That's what makes us human. We are smart. It's the prefrontal lobes. It's that complex brain that makes us human. That in turn produces our ability to reason, use tools, and speak. Okay, but where does that come from? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes from the pre uh, prefrontal lobes. Yeah, I get that. But is that enough? Are we simply born with a brain that, like a train, will inevitably just pull out of the station and keep going? 
because you can't stop it, because that's biology driving it to the conclusion of reason and language. Or is it something that has to be cultivated like a garden? You have to grow it up. You have to carefully tend it. You have to socialize. That's the debate, debate between nature and nurture. We want to know how much of each. We know it's both, but how much of each? So, we try to find the situation that comes close to that experiment that was suggested. Remember, we'd really like to do to decide how much of reasoning language use is due to being born, that brain, or being socialized. We'd like to do an experiment, take a child at the moment of birth, separate it from every human being, raise it in total isolation, and see what you get. Can't do that for moral reasons. So we look for situations that come close to that. Feral children. One attempt to see that. Children raised by animals. What do you get when you find a child raised by an animal? Very rare, but what do you get? <coughs> Is it a human? Is it an animal? Honestly, it's closer to an animal. Indicating the importance of? Learning. Nurture. Learning. Learning. Yeah, same thing. Nurture. Learning. Now, take a look at kids raised in isolation in a home. Tragic story, basic of a weird form of abuse where a grandfather in the first case, parents in other cases, and unfortunately there's been more than one, of a child who they basically treated like a pet animal down in the basement. Fed, clothed, but that's it. No human contact beyond that. When you find a child like that, is that an animal or is that human? It's an animal. Indicating the importance of? Nurture, again. And the Harlow monkey studies. A bunch of monkeys raised in isolation. What do you get when you raise a monkey in isolation? One weird little monkey. Okay, indicating the importance of? Nurture. Nurture. Then we turned it around and looked at the work of the Swiss board psychologist, Jean Piaget, who said, uh, yeah, I get nurture, but nature's a big deal as well. Simple biological growth. The brain is an organ like any other. And like any other organ of the body, it grows physically. And as it grows in physical complexity, so does the kind of information it's capable of processing. So we looked at the stages. Remember, Piaget performed a series of experiments on little kids to see how they were able to think and reason, and found that every biologically normal child goes through the exact same four stages in the exact same order, no matter what culture on earth, it is a cultural universal. Now, what does that begin to sound like? Nature or nurture? Nature. 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 It sounds like nature. We talked about the first stage. Oh. <coughs> Sensory motor. Ch child just born. What can it do? <laughs> Nothing. But the term it's giving is a sense of what's going on with a child at this age, from zero to two years old. What is that child capable of doing? Sensing and moving in the story. A big deal for a little baby is when it's able to turn over by itself. A big deal for a little baby is when it is able to sit up, crawl. Remember object permanence. I talked about object permanence in this class. They do 